A very warm welcome to the Art Blog Art Lovers. You know what? I've come late to appreciating textiles as an art form. I've always appreciated the skill of textile artists, but it was only really with the Ab Abakanovich show at Tate Modern that I realised what a radical force they could be. That was backed up by the work from the artists of G's, G's Bend at When Souls Run Deep at the National Gallery. And so today I'm heading, hot-footing it, to the Barbican Gallery to see a show I've been excited about since it was announced. This is called Unravel the Power and Politics of Textiles in Art and it's on until the 26th of May. It promises to bring over 50 artists from across the generations and across our globe bringing together some works of textile art and showing us what a radical um, art form this can be. So come and join me as we head inside. The first theme, Subversive Stitch, takes the bull by the horns and sets out the premise for the whole show. That within the hierarchy of artistic forms, textiles has often been relegated below other forms such as painting or sculpture. And that it's often seen as, quote, women's work, unquote, or a domestic craft. When in fact, it's been used as a radical art form, which in encapsulates tremendous skill. Nicholas Schlobel's work uses a huge variety of textiles and we see one example here. Whereas Gada Amir's um, pink landscape is an example of how she portrays a radical image but then covers it in threads. In the 1980s in Egypt she wasn't allowed to enrol in a painting class at art school because she was a woman. And this image is a powerful riposte to that. Whereas Judy Chicago's birth project filled the void of images in of birth in Western art. And she challenged the art world to, quote, give um, equal time to the incredible array of needle techniques that women have been using for centuries. Tracy Emin famously used textiles to try and understand one of the most traumatic years of her young life. The works by um, L.J. Roberts um, see her using friends and allies in a very direct and confrontational style. Fabrics of Everyday Life explores both um, the intensely personal nature of fabric and also how it can be used to express understanding from everyday life. I was gutted not to be able to see Loretta um, Petway's two quilts from G's Bend. They've been withdrawn from the show um, at the request of the lenders in an act of solidarity um, with Palestine in response to the Barbican's decision not to host the London Review of Books winter lecture series. But we do see echoes of G's Bend in Sanford Bigger's work, which you can see here. Murgatars stitches found fabrics, clothing, curtains and sheets to tell the little often told story in art terms of the Roma people. Whereas Sheila Hicks asks close family and friends and family members to surrender their most beloved items of clothing, then she then cocooned these in colourful yarns and thread, preserving them forever. Self uses textiles to investigate the experience of living in a woman's body distorting the figure, for example, at the hips. Whereas Faith um, Ringgold's Tar Beach 2 is one of her story quilts that was made in response to a publisher rejecting her autobiography. And she draws on a rich tradition of African-American quilt making. Textiles are often used to give voice to marginalized communities. For Sita Ad uh, Adab documented immigrant experiences in 19 works using a method of quilting involving heavily padded fabrics stitched together. The theme Borderlands explores and challenges and represents the idea of a border um, as both a physical but also emotionally charged psychological space. And it's the start of a explicitly political section of the show, which I thought was the, one of the strongest. Ikshan Adams' installation, which you see here, which fills an entire gallery space, explores so-called desire lines in post-apartheid South Africa. These are informal pathways that are created through time between two segregated townships, um, often by, by repetitive um, pedestrian use. And they often act as well as shortcuts, but also metaphorical shortcuts as well. A 
couple of artists here use textiles to produce maps to express um, deep political conflicts. Vinoja, a Sri Lankan artist, uses textiles to produce aerial maps of the decades-long civil war and these are informed by both her memories and other um, testimonies. Bade Ritt also uses textiles um, to explore how maps are always subject, uh, subjective and methods of control in their own. These maps show neo-colonial exploitation of the Philippines by um, multinational companies and are both shock shocking and, and surprisingly beautiful. Bearing Witness focuses on artists who use textile art to commemorate victims of oppression and to speak back to power. This work um, sees a red cowboy-hatted Lyndon Johnson in condemnation of the Vietnam War. Whereas these are abriellas by unknown artists were a potent form of resistance against Pinochet's dictatorship in Chile. They tell of various horrors of living in a dictatorship and were made small to be smuggled out to inform the world of what was going on. This work was woven to um, both commemorate um, the march to justice of a young woman who was murdered by Indian army officers, but also the persistence of her allies and friends in after she died in refusing to allow these army officers to use an arcane law to get off the hook. and repair looks at how textiles can be used to heal collective trauma. Angela Sue's astonishing work embroiders human hair as opposed to thread and, and she is responding to the pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong and meditating on the impact of the state's violence in mind and body. These works force you to both step back and look really closely while Jose Leonelson's work um, uses textiles as most intricate of art forms and um, which most time consuming of art forms to come to terms with his own um, diagnosis in the very early 1990s with HIV. Bourgeois small work, um, intimate work, confronts um, the physical symptoms of hysteria um, and it hangs, it's one of her later works, but then we remember that she came from a family who used fabrics as part of their living, making a living. Whereas Diedrich Brackens uses cotton both for practical and historical reasons to explore the enslavement, violence and subjugation, which has had a lasting effect on black bodies. The large downstairs space is filled with um, works surrounding this very broad theme, Ancestral Threads. There's some big names here whose works are drawn together by um, the inspiration of their ancestors in their own artistic practice. These artists from across the world and from across the generations look to reclaim, relearn ancient techniques and materials to find alternative moods of communication and I'll have a let you have a look at these works now.
Well, I hope that gave you a sense of Unravel, the power and politics of textiles in art, and it allowed you to think if this was a show you would like to go to or not. Um, as I said in my introduction, I'm really new to sort of appreciating textiles and immersing myself in them um, as an art form. So I really enjoyed this because there was a mixture of familiar names that I've seen over the last few years, like Faith Ringgold, who also showed at the Serpentine, or um, Abakanovitz and uh, Vicuña, who have both shown at Tate Modern and um, loads of Pete artists I, I hadn't I wasn't aware of or hadn't seen before so it was an education as well as seeing some um, very special works as well within this um, I thought the curation overall of using the smaller galleries for generally uh, more intimate works on the top floor although there are obviously massive exceptions and then allowing the big central gallery downstairs to be able to hold the showstoppers in terms of size worked really well and I think in terms of curation there were certain um certain themes that worked very well for me as well i really enjoyed subversive stitch which was the introduction to the show a strong introduction which showed a range of artists um reclaiming textiles as a radical art form with works which often held a very strong feminist message i thought that was an incredibly powerful run and there was a row of three themes across the top floor borderlands uh, bearing witness and wound and repair um which which i thought sort of really flowed well from one to the other to the other and, and contained within them some special works like the Apieras um, from Chile, these anonymous works produced as an act of political uh, resistance, which I really enjoyed enjoyed looking at. Um, I thought some of the themes were less strong and less that the art coalesced less around them. Um, I didn't think that was true with the ancestor uh, themed room downstairs. Or, uh, this was just kind of like an explosion of intergenerational um, in interdisciplinary textile art. Um, so I really admire the skill of a lot of these works and the vision, and I'm hoping that textiles continues to have a bigger and more powerful um, show, place in art galleries as it becomes more and more respected. I'm very much hoping later in the year to visit Dovecote Studios in Edinburgh to see a show on Andy Warhol and textiles. So I'll bring you that hopefully if I do manage to get there. Um, so overall, I did enjoy it. I thought that lots of the works were good. I thought that so some of the works were less strong and maybe the show could have been pared down a bit um, and, and had even more power and value. Um, but having said that, the diversity of, of artists from all over the world and the different ways in which different textiles have been used was really special. So with that in mind, I'm giving it a 7.7 .7 out of 10 and I do recommend it. Um, Unravel the Power and Politics of Textiles in Art is on until Sunday the 26th of May. It's £18 to get in, and I think with the really helpful um, curatorial uh, accompanying uh, text to each work, um, it would take you an hour or two to get round. It certainly did me. And so that's good value, in my opinion, to see some really interesting, radical, diverse, if sometimes disparate, textile art. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the art vlog. Unfortunately, I've been overrun by work and so i haven't been able to put out vlogs as much as i'd hoped but i'm going to very much rectify that by getting back to the weekend midweek meet weekend midweek um uploads over the next few weeks because there's still lots of good shows that have opened which i haven't covered on the london art scene and hopefully we'll be able to explore beyond that as well don't forget to get out there most importantly and explore your local art scene wherever you are in the world and thank you very much for watching it means a huge amount to me